Well, joining us now is top Daily Telegraph columnist and blogger Tim Blair, who for his sins has spent the past week up in the Hunter Valley checking out the by-election. It seems, Tim, that there were two words that were to punters what uh, grape rot is to the Hunter Valley vineyards, and those two words were Matt and Keen. Tell us about it, Tim. <laughs> I'd add the words Maltzman and Turnbull. Uh, the, I, think the, I think we've got a new factor in Australian politics, the Turnbull curse. Remember, anything he throws money at <laughs> tends not to end up going very well. So he's chucked a bunch of cash. I think uh, he threw three grand, uh, Lucy threw three grand at uh, Independent. Um, oh, Kirstie O'Connell. And uh, yeah, that's uh, two and a half thousand votes that six grand bought so so far in counting. So yeah, well done, Malcolm. And um, yeah, by the way, just uh, just as Laurie Lightfoot said, you know, only speak to black or brown people. I made the same vow when I was in the Hunter Valley, thinking it would cut down on my workload, but um, ended up interviewing <laughs> ended up interviewing hundreds of coal miners. So yeah, it, was, uh, it backfired terribly on me. <laughs> James. So tell us, um, you know, what was the reaction of people uh, around the, the district when you were talking to them uh, about uh, urban liberals and uh, what, what they thought about the Berejiklian government? I mean, were they doing this because they were, did they vote the way they voted because they were pro-coal and pro-jobs or were they doing this because they were trying to save Gladys? Definitely not Gladys. Nothing to do with Gladys. I barely heard the, the name Gladys. In fact, uh, I think only one person raised Gladys in any serious way. And uh, it was just someone I was talking to in a pub. And it turns out he was from Melbourne. He was in town for work. So um, um, there wasn't a great deal of local. Well, if anything, there was hostility towards the Liberals that wasn't reflected that, you know, these people live in a Nationals electorate. They very um, uh, sensibly see that there's a, a difference between the two coalition parties. So uh, you raise someone, the name of Matt Keane, for example, uh, you're not going to get a lot of friends up around the Hunter. No way. Rita. But Gladys and Matt and the rest of the Liberals, uh, the city Liberals, would see this as a great victory. So it's kind of a, a strange situation there where the One Nation had a very strong vote and the Shooters yep. and Fishers had a very strong vote. But at the end of the day, it looks like the Nationals are going to be returned with an increased majority. Yeah, it's a big heads up though for the for the coalition and for Gladys that they've got to stop doing this um, uh, sort of each way bet that they can have mm. the Nationals being pro coal and uh, Liberals led by the Energy Minister Matt Keane in New South Wales and various other you know they call they call themselves moderate Liberals uh, promoting um, uh, transitioning away from coal. Even John Barillaro, the Nationalist leader, has in the past spoken of transitioning away from coal. He's not saying that too much anymore, which explains why his party picked up uh, so many votes well, uh, in, in this election. The extraordinary thing is no one foresaw the collapse in the Labor vote. Uh, they had a good candidate. He's a former coal miner himself. Uh, campaigned well, very personable chap. But the thing that really wounds any Labor candidate in a pro-coal seat, even when he's saying all the right pro-coal things, is that he's part of a party that's been campaigning on climate change since 2007. Even the last federal election mm. was a climate election. Now, it's a bit hard to get away from that. And the candidate, you know, I, I spoke to the chap, he's a nice guy, but he, um, he said that he, he, before he accepted the nomination as the candidate in the Hunter, the Upper Hunter, he uh, had to get an assurance from Labor that they wouldn't bugger him around, his words, uh, by undermining his pro-coal message with uh, climate change crap. So there you go. So Tim, when you were speaking to people out there in the, in the pubs and the vineyards of the Hunter Valley, uh, what is the attitude on climate change? I mean, they're right there at the pointy end of it. We've had Joel Fitzgibbon saying Labor's got to start mm. embra you know, embracing the working classes again, the blue collar vote. What, how do they, view climate change and the issues and this uh, desire to get to net zero emissions what does it mean to them uh no they just it's it's not on the not on the it's not on the game playing board it's just not not part of the equation jobs uh i spoke to a young tradie at one point who said that he wished there was a liberal candidate on the uh on the ballot just so he could put that candidate last and i was like thinking why why, why is this expecting some sort of, you know, uh, you know, the Liberals hate the workers, whatever. And he said, no, 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 it's because the Liberals just want to close coal mines. 
And this, this bloke had worked in Maitland, worked in uh, Musselbrook, worked in various areas, and he just said, said it very plainly. When coal is up, jobs are up, employment is up, everything works. And when coal descends, when coal is uh, walked away from, then you hit hard times. So that's the equation they said. Of course, you do have, I mean, it's a 28,000 square kilometre seat. It's not small. So you do have, of course, some sort of climate changey elements and uh, a lot of sort of tree change uh, people who've moved to, to the area from the cities and they take with them their horrible city views on climate. And, uh, well, they've been, you know, they've been put in their place a little bit during this vote. Excellent. James. So just to take this out to a federal level, what do you think that this portends for the next federal election? What uh, message should Albanese be taking, Anthony Albanese, be taking away from this? Is uh, his inner city strategy going to work here? It would be nice to think that, uh, that, that Labor and, and, and the Liberal Party would learn a little bit from something like this. I mean, it is only a by-election, but, you know, it's, it might be a more significant one than a lot of people realise. Uh, Albanese's problem is, of course, always trying to um, uh, fight off the Greens in the inner cities and uh, win in the suburbs and uh, the regions. And you've got to sell different messages. We saw during the federal election in 2019 that Labor's message was very different north of the Tweed, where mining jobs were, were critical, than it was, uh, say, in Marrickville in Sydney. You can't, you can't be doing that. You know, there's this thing called the internet sort of keeps records. People can compare what you're saying in one area and what you're saying in another. You, you can't have a, a geographically based policy structure. It doesn't work. So, you know, you, know, you talk to Labor people about this. They say, oh, but, you know, we, we can't lose these inner city seats. Well, you know, it's terrible for us. We, you know, we've got to try and fight off the Greens. Well, how many Liberals are winning inner city seats? They seem to form government every single time without winning inner city seats. Maybe fight in the suburbs, maybe fight in the regions and uh, let the Greens, you know, chew themselves up uh, in the middle of town. <laughs> Fantastic. Tim Blair, we'll leave you to your kale muffins and chai latte and uh, <laughs> thanks so much for coming on Outsiders. Absolutely. And please, everybody, go visit the Upper Hunter. It is beautiful. Uh, although if you're in Dungog, the roads are probably the worst I've ever experienced and uh, I've been in Mexico. So, yeah, <laughs> there, go for it. <laughs> Tim Blair, thanks so much.